Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale and you are listening to episode 82 for February the 1st. And once again, I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hey, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Thank you, too, so much for joining me each week. We, uh, discuss the uh, ins and outs of this life that we call artist life. Very glamorous, and we frequently have people ask us for our autograph. And wait a minute, I'm thinking about something. Right? I guess I had a dream. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you must have. <laughs> or a nightmare. It depends on how you do it. <laughs> Okay, for our listeners, if you go to www dot talk art podcast.com that's talk art podcast.com you see the information page there for the video links that we try to uh, select for our discussion and um, one of our uh, artist teachers artist coach mentors that we all three like to follow occasionally is uh, Stefan Bauman and it's rare when you have a complete video of his painting technique. And that uh, was one of the first videos I like to jump out of the chair when I came across that. He's a much younger in the video because he ha- he's ran for years a, uh, a PBS uh, show from, I guess it's called The Grand View of uh, painting, uh, in plain air painting in our uh, national parks. But... Um, Diane, did you did you enjoy watching Stefan uh, paint? Yeah, it was it was interesting. <laughs> it brought back memories of last time I was at the Grand Canyon. But um, <laughs> we were just talking about this. Uh, it was really windy the last time I was there, and I I can't imagine standing there near the edge of the canyon and painting because everything would be down in the canyon probably. <laughs> but um, I've it ne- looked like it was a nice day when he was out there. Yeah, it does. I've never seen it up close, but. I don't like heights or whatever, and I'd probably be scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> I've driven over over the dra- Grand Canyon in a, because I used to drive a tractor trailer. I used to drive back and forth over the bridge that spans across it. And I went out across it one time at night, and it was really cool because you could see all the lights down at the bottom. And, you know, so that was pretty neat. Yeah, pictures don't do it justice at all. Mm-mm. When you're standing at the edge of that thing, it is just beyond words. <laughs> it's really incredible. 
Wow. Well, I I I found it rather interesting then in Spain. And the thing that that struck me, he since then changed his attitude about using turpentine. Because in all of his other videos, he criticizes his ear, says you kill yourself if you use too much turpentine. Well, being outside, it's a little different too, because mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about fumes so much. But yeah, because he really, yeah, people don't don't use it as much as they used to. Yeah, he was talking about you know uh, using turpentine as a medium, you know, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> outside too, you know. So maybe that's you know. Yeah. Definitely well, use the turpentine in the. Uh, you know, inside, you know, they, uh, in fact, that was my big throwback. You two were telling me, you, well, what, two years ago, three years ago, you know, Clyde, you, you got to get back in the painting with oil. Cause at that time I went from watercolor to acrylic and I was bouncing back and forth. And my whole purpose of doing those, cause I live in a very small apartment, studio apartment and the fumes would kill me. So there's no, there's a whole, not a whole lot of mess with uh, watercolor and acrylic. And that was my main rationale. And you two were saying, yeah, but what about oil? Well, the last time I painted an oil uh, was when I was like in my teens. And I recall vividly, and uh, I grew up in Indiana. And during the winter times, my mother would kick me out to the garage and I'd have a little space heater and I might, I'd be freezing trying to paint out in the garage because of the turpentine and the linseed oil, you know, and, and the fumes. And, um, so there was no way I was going to paint with oil paints here. And then thankfully, you know, modern technology or Don, uh, uh, Diane told me about the uh, walnut oil based paints and the unsolvent type paints and the rest is history. Yeah, <laughs> they even make water soluble oils too i mean if you wanted to just go that route but i mean because i had and when i first started painting again played around with pretty much everything they had to offer you know and then decided on what i liked you know so but the one yeah, you, can, you can paint without using turpentine if you don't want to use it you don't have to you know, you know i found i have been just amazed at the uh, walnut oil uh, it just takes that paint right out of the brushes and it doesn't it doesn't have a, an offensive odor and it doesn't irritate me at all however last week you two i told you two the story about you know taking that kelly folsom's you know class you know online is a big user of uh the uh, old master's marriage as a medium and so it's very expensive and i finally i got my uh, got my marriage and I tried it, and I had a very allergic reaction to it because of the strong smell. It was burning. My eyes were burning and whatever. And I was, you know, almost depressed. But this last this Friday, I tried it again. And I didn't use as much of it as the first time. And believe it or not, I got through a complete pain without any issues at all. And the smell, unlike the last time, the smell didn't stick around for two or three days. I mean, the next day, I could hardly smell it. And I discovered something about the marriage that I really, really love. I was telling Constance about this, Diane. I'm really ex been ex the la last month or so, I've been experimenting with the uh, glazing technique of oil painting. I've been rather successful using the walnut oil alkyd, but the problem is it would to get the glaze, then the paint would be kind of runny. I mean, afterwards I would see it running down yeah, on the canvas. The marache, oh my God, it is beautiful, perfect for glazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it's. I think I'm gonna say a word, and I'm hoping I'm saying it correctly. It's like what one of the I uh, heard somebody else saying is isotropic is that the correct pronunciation that when you use it it, it is a liquid but then when you're done it fixes itself right where is that the correct word i'm not sure isotropic i don't know but anyway that's what yeah. it's very cool because it can be like a liquid when you're using it but then when you lift the brush it sets right then and stays there instead of running. 
and, and that's one of the beauties of the merge yeah is it's it's after it has a beautiful quality after i did this week's of the kelly's painting with it you know then i the next day a painting i've been working on is the painting of my from my daughter's uh uh, photograph of uh, sunset boats and it was finally dry enough and now I, I wanted to to add you know some glaze to it and the sky I wanted to darken the sky a little bit because it was just a little because it's supposed to be sunset night scene the sky was just a little too bright but I didn't want to add black I didn't want to add more you know so I thought you know what I'm going to try this ultramarine blue because it uh, it's a semi-transparent color with mixed up with marriage it came out perfect i was just so excited i mean this is this is so cool this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> so yeah now a uh, a convinced you know user of the marriage and uh, but as long as what i found out as long as i don't uh, basically hold it right underneath my nose if I back away from well, you know I'm not breathing that much. It, uh, it doesn't seem to bother me because my eyes didn't didn't start watering like that first time I think that first time was my first time ever using it and uh, my body just wasn't used to it and I use a lot I mean I just, that might be part of it you used a I lot squirted, I squirted out a big old blob of that I, you know yeah, that might be what your problem was <laughs> well, anytime you use you know a different material than you're used to it does take some time to figure out how best to use it like you know yep. sometimes you need a little and sometimes you need more than you think <laughs> and you you find different ways of using things so got, it, it takes experimentation I just yeah well on these non-solvent paints with the you know the walnut oil based paints and even what's not, you can even use linseed oil based paints with the walnut oil and the, 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 uh, the pure walnut oil. It, I use that to clean the brushes with. Yeah, I've never used that stuff. So. Yeah, it just comes out perfectly. And, and yeah, they, they, what happens, I use it to, to get all the paint out of the brush as much as possible. And then afterwards, if I'm not going to be painting anything like within a few hours or the next day, I'll uh, use the uh, the paintbrush uh, soap to thoroughly, you know, wash wash the brushes. So and then, you know, let them, you know, let them dry, and it just, oh yeah. I saw on somewhere I don't remember where I saw it the other day. Um, somebody got had gotten one of those the small um, roller uh, pans that they have selling like painting stores, mm -hmm. for the smaller rollers. And they had put oil in the bottom part, the, the, the walnut oil or something, whatever the kind of oil they were using, in the in the, instead of paint. And they put left their brushes sitting in the oil. And they said it works huh. perfectly fine. You don't have to clean your brushes. <laughs> you just leave them sitting in the oil. <laughs> I haven't tried it, so I don't know how well that works, but that's what they said. Well, I guess you could put the walnut oil in one of those instead of the turpentine, one of those little things that holds... Well, that, the problem you with that is your that. brushes are sitting on the on the bristles, but in the pan you could just lay your brushes on the yeah on the bottom. Yeah, so that has a curly thing down. across the top that you mm, can stick yeah. your brushes in. But uh, yeah, it doesn't. It depends yeah, on you that. don't you don't want to sit stick them in something where the they're sitting on the bristles. But right, they had them laying right. down, so it wasn't sitting on the bristles. But I thought that, that was a neat sense. idea. Yeah, I have to try that sometime and see how it works. <laughs> Nice feature that I like about the uh, water. Oh, I have two small jars. One jar <coughs> is uh, when I have a lid on it, and when I'm done, when I done completely paint, I'm not going to paint for two or three days. I'll take the jar that I put a little bit of the uh, water and oil in, and it has it has all the you know paint residue, and I'll dump that into the jar, put the lid on it, and then I'll take and the paper towel and clean you know the bottom of the jar you know out with the you know the paint and everything okay the one with the lid will sit for two or three days well, what happens is the oil stays to the top the paint drops to the bottom and then when i get ready to paint again i just slowly pour that oil and and i don't have to use as much you know you know it's yeah well, turpentine does well i would call it turpentine but now that's you can get like gamsol for cleaner 
and it does just as it does like that but all that pigment goes down to the bottom and the good stuff stays on top and so you just pour it off <laughs> that's why you collect jars <laughs> spaghetti jars and pickle jars you don't throw those out because they have those nice lids on them that tighten down good and you just pour from one jar to the next you know back and forth until you get you know and all that stuff goes to the bottom i've got two uh i've got two uh they're small jars that uh had um um olives in them you know <laughs> that I, I kept and it, it's perfect you know and and mm -hmm. i just you know i i i uh, dump the the old oil into the jar and then i add just a little a couple a little bit fresh to it i'm good to go and it still works it cleans out that paint just you know so uh it's you know it, it's a an, an efficient way of uh you know utilizing this water oil is expensive it is it, yeah i found it very expensive <laughs> but um at least I'm not intoxicating myself, you know, because <laughs> I'll never forget when I was telling my mother about, you know, painting with oil paints and my uh, younger brother was visiting at the time. He remembers me. You know, <laughs> he, says, well, he must be hot. I heard him yelling on the phone. He must be high as a kite half the time because that oil. <laughs> and she yelled out. He says he's not. He says it doesn't stink. And so he got on the phone. And I had to explain to him. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was cool. I said, yeah, you know, because he was telling, he remembers, because I would. Yeah, I know. I, it's been, because at one time we were all still using plain old turpentine to clean the brushes, but they've they've come up with turpenoid and all these other, and then Gamsol has come out, and you can clean your brushes with that, and then now the walnut oil, you can clean. So, I mean, there's a way to clean your brushes without having to use because uh, that old turpentine it used to just really you don't get high you get a headache <laughs> it just burns it blow, burns up your brain cells <laughs> and i had a very small bedroom being the oldest i had my own bedroom you know so i had my paint painting sitting around you know drying and of course my brushes was like oh yeah i frequently i'm surprised i didn't send myself to the hospital yeah <laughs> It was so horrible. The rest of the family was constantly yelling at me. <laughs> Thank you, stop out of <laughs> Well, I think nowadays, too, people are more conscientious about all the toxins and stuff that are, you know, in your environments. Back, you know, years ago, nobody even mentioned, I don't remember anybody ever mentioning the toxicity of stuff uh, like that. No. Like, <laughs> we just had stuff around all the time. Yeah, I mean, and it was, it was pretty smelly, you know. Yep, and I I will admit though, painting oils is a little bit a little bit more messier than than what I like. If I'm not careful, I will. I have ruined several T-shirts uh, where <laughs> I brush. Well, the thing about with painting with oils, if you catch the drip fast enough, you can get it out. It's the acrylics that you can't get off once they've dried on. <laughs> that is a you know. I've got lots of t-shirts because I like to paint with acrylics too. But, you know, once you splash that on your shirt, you better have an apron on or an old t-shirt or something you don't want anymore because that's not coming back out, you know, once it dries out in there. Yep. So, oh, yeah. I've got uh, several pairs of pants and shirts that uh, are my painting, my painting uniform. <laughs> well, they say that artists have two different kinds of clothes. Mm -hmm. Clothes with paint and clothes without that aren't that haven't gotten paint on them yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I had a brand new shirt over the summer. I bought a brand new shirt. I hadn't even worn it yet, and I went to put it on and it had paint on it. I don't know how, how does that, that happen. Paint on. I don't know. It's like oh my that's God. not nice. <laughs> no, <laughs> it wasn't much, but it was still there. I, I hate happened. looking. I hate looking in the mirror after I've been painting and see paint on something. <laughs> you know. Uh, because you gotta get, got to get that shout stuff out and spray it really good and rub it in there because it's to get it to come out when you wash it. If you're using oils, if it's acrylics and it's dried on there, you forget it. <laughs> T-shirts that, that get paint on, they afterwards they become paint rags. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you can wear them until you decide that they're paint rags. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in college and I was painting a lot. The my um I had a couple pair of pants that I always wore for painting, and the, I had so much paint on the legs I could stand them up 
<laughs> I'd take them off and I could just stand them in the corner. That's they would funny. stand up. They were so stiff. <laughs> but they were the, they were the best. <laughs> yeah, they're your most comfortable ones when you, you know, because you yeah. always wear the most comfortable things when you're painting. Oh, brother. Yeah. I don't have <laughs> like that, but that would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My studio has carpet in it and I have paint all in the carpet. And I, I, well, I was going to take it out before, you know, I got the t studio all set back up again. And then for some reason, I decided not to. Now I'm kind of wishing, I mean, it wasn't, it's not great carpet, but still there's spots all over it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, uh, Diane, are you, are you, are you working on anything new or any, any new projects? Or? Yeah, I've always got something going. <laughs> um. Okay. Do you do your paintings sequentially? I mean, like you work on one until it's done and then you start another one or you do, do you just start multiple projects? Um, I do both, but most of the time I do one because I don't have a lot of space. So I don't really have room to do, spread <laughs> out. unless I'm working on little ones, then I can do a whole bunch at a time, you know, because I have more space to spread them out. But if I'm doing bigger ones, I really don't have any other space to put it, you know, somewhere while it's drying so I can work on something else, but. Okay. Right what, now, I'm, I'm finishing up a big one. So, what what uh, what little ones are you working on? The um, I'm not working on any at the moment. I have I have some canvases gesso that I did the other day that I, they're ready to go. So as soon as I finish this big one, I'll be going on to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you say so, big, how big? How big is it? Um, I think it's twenty four by thirty. A nice size, pretty good size, yeah. Yes, it's a seascape, yeah. <laughs> I'm still working right. on that series. I, I, I enjoy, like seascapes, I'm really enjoying it, yeah. I've I spent like a lot it. of time at the ocean and like, like growing up and everything, so it's um, any kind of water, really, but the ocean in particular, yeah. I miss the beach, <laughs> I haven't been to a beach in quite a long time, I, I really kind of miss it. I assume you're using photographs as a reference, right? Or you know, for this. Or... Um, I I I've used reference photos, but I don't um, paint directly from them. If that makes sense. I mean, I'll, I'll I might start out with an idea of of some photos I'm using, but I don't usually look at them after the beginning. Yeah. I just, I just keep painting. Once but... I get to a certain point, I don't need only. So the only time, the only time, basically, the only time that you do uh, what is called a la prima painting, which is wet on wet, is if you if you work outside or you do a plein air outside, right? But in your studio, it's pretty much a. a um, no, I do a la prima in my studio too, especially the smaller ones. I, I mean, I I do plein air paintings that aren't are that are, that are not a la prima. You know, you just take them out multiple times to work on them. Mm -hmm. That's so how it's. That Stephen, Stephen Bauman video, and he talked about, you know, the, you know, you really only got about a couple hours, you know, because the light changes, you know, and the scene changes. So unless you have a really good memory or, you know, <laughs> you've got to get a, work a lot of stuff. So, so yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, usually your max, max is probably two hours in, in a plain mm -hmm. air painting. But you, like, when I'm, Usually if I'm playing air painting and I want to work longer, I'll pick a day when it's not sunny. So your shadows and stuff don't change as fast. Okay. But you have to make you have to make mental notes of where the shadows are when you start. Otherwise, you're going to be ch chasing them the whole time you're painting because yeah. you know, they're going to be moving. <laughs> so a lot of that stuff, you, you just have to make mental notes of where things are. And like when your initial sketch or whatever, you have to remember where they are and what the colors are. Okay. Constance, are you, uh, you got any projects you're working on or? I set up a still life in the dining room of flowers and I worked on it one day last week and then I had several days of migraines again. And so it's dry and the flowers are starting to fade. So I'm going to have to, I'm thinking either thinking about finishing it up or um, maybe just start another one because it's, you know, but it's still sitting there re ready to finish. I just have to 
It's like not have any migraine days. I've been having a serious problem with migraines lately. And yeah. it's just been rough. A serious hamper in your your career. Yeah, when fifty percent of your days in the month are migraine days, it's kinda hard to you know, you're playing catch up around the house and the animals and then, you know, then it's like you have time to you have to make time to finish your painting or whatever, but I just need to get over there and finish the painting. Yep. Uh, since we're both enrolled in, you know, Terry Folsom's uh, class, I know her emphasis, she's more of a still life painter. But mm -hmm. what I've been amazed at uh, when her, her videos, I am learning so much of just um, basic principles that mm -hmm. be applied to any subject matter. Right. It's just incredible with her, each of her lessons, you know, so she'll mention like the certain objective lessons, talk about uh, hard edges and shadows and light. And and if you'll notice, I mean, she doesn't actually use the term checkering, but she does use checkering. Yes. she just, That's the hard and soft edges that she uses, you know, lost and found edges. It's the same thing as what Bauman calls a checkering, you know. Um, a lot of you know they're they're both on board, so I I guess that's why. But I am just you know every every video I she will say something that I'll never thought of. And I said, oh you know, like yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. So and of course her her you know emphasis you got to put the brush time in, you got to put the brush miles, you got to put you gotta, yeah. I've got to get moved into the caddy. I haven't moved all my art stuff back into the, you know, I got it all out of the van, you know, and got the van cleaned up to ready to go. So when they picked it up last week, they picked it up. But this, you know, I haven't, I've got to get all of my art stuff put back in the van. I mean, not the van, but the new vehicle, the Cadillac. So that'll be cool. I want to take one of the seats out in the back. So I'll have more room in the back to have my stuff. Her, uh, yeah. yeah. Her, her class, or, you know, with these videos, she has a, you know, does a setup, and she paints from, you know, from the setup. She takes, you know, a photograph, and of course, we are less, we, we paint, you know, from, from the photograph. And what I like is she has two photographs. She has a photograph of the actual setup, and this mm -hmm. photograph of the painting that she did. Yeah. You know? And you can see where, and she keeps talking about, you know, like, so, well, don't, so, don't worry about, you know, getting everything exact. You know, just get your basic shapes in and 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 then you can Yeah, see. if you need to change the shape of something because you like it better, then change it. I mean, that's that's her rule. That's one of her rules. I mean, if there, yeah. if there's something you don't want in the in the arrangement, then leave it out, you know. <laughs> Which is a great thing, you know, because always before I felt like I had to just paint everything that was there and not cut out stuff that i don't want you know so and there's a there's a project that i'm i'm so far it's just in my mind i haven't actually sat down and started working it out but i'm i'm think i'm going with with kelly's class and with their, most of the time i've been doing you know smaller paintings. kelly's is you know eight by tens and even some of my other uh independent paintings they're only you know 11 by 14 or you know or, or, or smaller and I haven't done a large, larger than 11 by 15, 14 in about a month or so. And I've got some uh, 16 by 20 canvases. I'm thinking about I'm, I'm going to do a still life, a 16 by 20 still life, all in oil. You know, I was using the technique for a while. I would use a, put the blocking in and tint the canvas with acrylic and then go over the top with oil. This time I'm going to, from I'm going to tint it with the Marge. Uh, I'm going to do a Kelly Folsom painting, but it's going to be a 16 by 20. But what I'm going to do, I like so much some of her her setups and her her these jars and the flowers. She, I'm she has some really cool still life props. <laughs> I'm going to take like two or three of her photographs, and I'm and pick the objects that you know the jars and flowers and and then i'm going to use my sketchbook create the composition do it do it, a sketch of it completely and then start to see how it goes and i'll yeah. use that's book. a good idea you try you know, coloring and the lighting yeah. you know on our on her facebook page there's a whole section in 
that has photographs of different still lifes that you can do that she's not done on the videos. Oh, really? Yeah. Go and look in the photograph. Uh -oh. <laughs> There's, she has some really cool still life setups that she's photographed for everybody to use. And they're not, they're just, you know, which will help you give you more ideas of how to set up some more still lifes of your own, you know, if you want to set it. Because really all you need is a vase and a bouquet of flowers to, to set up a still life. Yeah. I don't have you know. a lot of stuff. I do have these, these uh, Greek vases. Did I ever show you guys my Greek vase? Mm -mm, you've got some cool vases. Yeah. Or vases, as they say. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it. For our listeners, there's going to be a moment. A I've been collecting a few things here and there. I like, I have this thing about teapots, cool teapots. And so. I used to go, when I was in college, I used to go to secondhand stores and get stuff for like 50 mm -hmm. cents or when you, mm -hmm. you know, quarter That's or something. That's the best like place that. to go. Yeah. yeah. I have a whole collection of bottles and just different kinds of um, vases and. Oh, oh yeah. That's that. cool. Yeah. That's pretty. I mean, even if you didn't put all the decoration in the painting, you the have that beautiful it. shape yeah. of that. That vase is absolutely gorgeous. Well, I'll tell you a story about that vase. Okay. It is a, it is a. I mean, you can use artificial flowers too. Ones I like the best are the hydrangeas that you can get. I've forgotten those from Walmart and they're gorgeous. I mean, it's really hard to tell when you're painting <laughs> whether a hydrangea, a big, you know, is. <laughs> It's alive or not. You know, you have to pick and choose what looks good. You can't just buy. Because Walmart has some crappy flowers. <laughs> bigger. But they do have some that are nice. Another one that's bigger than this, but I'm not going to get it because it got broke. And I glued the uh, the handle back onto it. So, But still kind of, I don't move it around. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. <laughs> I've had these vases ever since I was in the Navy. Oh, cool. Uh, my ship I was on, we pulled in, we went into Greece, we pulled into Athens, Greece. Okay. And as soon as you get off the ship, there's what we used to, we used to call them. Hey, Joe's, you know, vendors along the, the, and they go, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they call it all Joe's. Yeah. <laughs> and there was this vendor had all these different vases and these were replicas of what's in the museums and what's been the you know, archeological finds. Okay. So these are, are, you know, replicas, exact replicas. And so I bought, I think I bought like 10 of them. They were real cheap. They were like $5, $10, you know. They're, so I, I, I don't know, maybe five or six of them. Anyhow, I'll never forget when I brought those home, the reactions from my wife was, so why did you buy all those piss pots? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to send them around so you don't have to go, have them go to the back? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's hysterical well my daughters they remember these you know with <laughs> moving and everything i've only been able to save two of them i had like you know, the and these two and of course eventually i'm going to wrap these up and ship them to italy my oldest daughter i promise him to want some because she remembers them vividly she remembers yeah you know, <laughs> it's funny how children remember that stuff we would stare, stare for hours at like the pretty design, you know, and everything. So eventually I got to do a painting of them. So yeah, you need to, they're really pretty. Another project in my mind to, you know, uh, try and, uh, you know, come up and with. You order your groceries from Walmart or order a, a bouquet, a bouquet of, of flowers. They have flowers at Walmart. I get them. <laughs> I might. I don't know. Fresh, you could set up a, a still life similar to what Kelly has, and just substitute your own things that are similar yeah, in shape to her. In yeah, I know. It's one of those things. It's on, <laughs> on the do list. <laughs> I get motivated in, to yeah to do it, but uh, but that's all that I have. Now that I've got a car again, I can go to the local store and, and peruse the goodies. <laughs> that's where i like to go is to peruse there's one place that's called uh, something attic and i go they have really good prices on their stuff you know for like 40 or 50 bucks you can get like a whole arm bag full of goodies to bring home to paint yeah but i was telling constance when you were looking at the vase that i used to go to um secondhand stores and buy old you know vases and glasses and bottles and things when I was in college. I have a whole bunch of stuff. 
I we still have a bunch find of some really Coca-Cola neat things for like bottles. a quarter or something. <laughs> yeah, Coca Cola bottles. I think I have a Fanta orange bottle, uh, some kind of grape knee high bottle, and then other little medical bottles that you can get for pretty inexpensive. Well, I'm <laughs> enjoying this, uh, you know, the learning, you know, the paint still lives. I don't want to get myself pigeonholed into being a still life painter, but the thing about it is taking her course. I'm learning other things too. I mean, yeah. the, the principles that she talks about can be applied to, you know, other, you know, other works of art. Well, the best place to start is with a still life because it's set up. You have constant light. Everything's, you know, the way you want it basically. And it doesn't move. So the yeah. light's not changing the shadows, you know, nothing's moving other, unless you have live plants. Yeah, yeah so, and then you just get used to painting that way. You yeah, know, you can you, see a lot. More comfortable, then you can kind of go out from your comfort zone and start doing other things, you know. So, yeah, when, but, but yeah. when you have the thing, the objects in front of you, instead of looking at a photograph, you see a lot more color in them. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to um, do a better job of painting the stuff rather than doing it from a photo. I think I'll, I, you know, I'll <laughs> give that statement because I did, I don't know if you two remember my, uh, my old shoes. You know, when I did my, my tribute to Van Gogh, that was mm-hmm. a setting. I took, those were my actual work shoes. I, I put them up in a, you know, in a setting and I, and I put the light on it and painted it from, uh, from life. And they came out looking, you know, really, you know, really remarkable. And uh, like I got to do it. I, I was thinking there day I might do another one, you know, going to be like Van Gogh obsessed with my old work shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but the next one is in my mind i've been wanting to do it to jackson pollock but i'm not going to splatter paint on it well i was thinking about doing my old work shoes but then splatter all different colors of paint on the shoes like what jackson pollock shoes would look like <laughs> no, his was years and years of splatter paint on those shoes <laughs> you know these it, it, it's it's interesting there are so many different things that as artists we can paint and you know there's, there's nothing holding us back i, I different people may come well i don't know what to paint oh my god there is this <laughs> you know <laughs> you don't too, know usually have too many ideas <laughs> yeah that's... absolutely and there's there and and the thing is uh you have too many ideas but then it's just getting the uh, you know get up off your butt and do it you know mm-hmm. You know, and, and um, that's, and we can also change. You don't, nothing set in stone. You can change if you don't like that color, make it a different color or what, you know. And I predominantly work with photographs and I'll spend hours looking for, for reference photos. Of, and many of my compositions are made up of two or three photos because I don't do it exactly like a photo. I just, I need to know what a glass bottle looks like. Okay. I need to know what a lamp looks like. Okay. And so I find, yeah. And then I, then I, I kind of fit, fiddle around and, and, uh, I, in my mind, I just, I've been, you know, uh, just messing around, but now I'm going to start, I'm going to start sketching. I, I've got my sketchbook and I'm going to start just kind of sketching ideas together, you know, r- and rough outlines. And I, I've never done that before. And I'm going to see how, that's what I was thinking about this, you know, this painting, this next project for this week. That I'm going I'm to start with uh, using the objects from Kelly's, you know, uh, because this last lesson, he had this um, old um, jar. It was called a simple, with a simple painting. It's a jar and with a, a uh, that one uh, looked like a, just a, a weed with little tiny. Yeah, a little branch with white flowers. That's cute. I don't want to do it. I don't need to. The whole the whole point was uh, was uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, edges and uh, and shadowing that jar. Oh my God! I when I started out, like always, it looked like everything looked like crap. Oh, okay, but then I just kept at it. yeah. And that jar started; it just like came alive right in front of my eyes. It just started coming out, you know, perfect. And it was so much fun, so much enjoyment that to, to make that 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 jar look look rounded it was a you know here we are this is a one-dimensional you know looking at a one-dimensional photograph but to, to get the the roundness of where it it just you know popped from the canvas you know it's 
So uh, she's got some others, you know, copper pots and, and some other things that, that, you know, I like, I really like the, uh, the idea of creating the, the shine and the reflection on items. So that's, you know, the, uh, this next project, I'm going to really emphasize that, uh, but it's going to be larger instead of the little eight by tens, I'm going to go for it. Also, <laughs> This me excuse to use my two oil paint brushes, the really wide brushes that I've got <laughs> that are too big. Too, too Break big. them in. <laughs> right, too big to use on these little canvases. So I'm going to look forward to trying them out on these big, you know, on the big one. Okay. We've managed to chatter along now for our time is up for 30 minutes or so. And you have been listening to the Artist Fans Podcast, episode 82 for February the 1st. I am Nut, Constance Bronson. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and uh, I hope we didn't bore you talking a little bit about uh, our artist's life. You know, being an artist, this is, this is what we do, folks. This is how we live, what we live for, and uh, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to say goodbye to Diane and Constance. Uh, Diane, say bu- goodbye to everybody. <laughs> good night, Con- Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. And uh, your turn now. Uh, Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening to us, folks. And please, as I always say, give us some love. However you find this podcast, give us a thumbs up. Give us a positive rating. We really appreciate it. Good night, folks. We'll see you next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.